So this is the re-entrancy attack, and this is probably the most important one. This is the one that wiped out the Dow, the original hack that exposed uh, the serious security flaws of Ethereum. The Dow was the huge contract that was going to be the proof of concept to show that Ethereum was a serious financial instrument, and they deployed the digital autonomous organization, and an attacker stole $30 million of the $100 million put in it, and then the so-called white hat hackers stole all the remaining money just in order to compound the disaster so much as to cause the Ethereum blockchain to have a rollback and a fork to try to return the money that was stolen this way. And here's a simplified version of how it worked with the fallback function, overridden. And the trick is they were able to create a subcontract and they had a legitimate withdrawal they could do, but they put in the fallback function. So when they were withdrawing money, it would then withdraw extra withdrawals in the same um, function. So when you, a transfer of money came in, it would repeat it over and over. This is like Xeroxing a check and cashing that check many times. So that's what we're going to do. So this is the rewards contract. And again, I'm going to put in the clean version to make sure I've got the original vulnerable version. So we go here to rewards, get rid of the old stuff, put in the original version. OK, and then compile. And then get rid of the old blockchain, get a new clean one. All right, and now I assume just deploy it. Let me get down. All right, now we look at the withdraw function here, which is up here. There we are. There's withdraw. All right. After, okay, it checks. You're going to fund this thing with a certain amount of gifts to give away, and then people can withdraw them. So if the gifts remaining are greater than zero, then it will um, execute a call command, which will send one either to the, uh, the recipient. That's what they expected. They expected this call command to just send one amount to the ether, but what it actually does is transfer control of execution to the sender's contract. And a crafted contract can use this to execute further withdrawals. So here's the attack contract. And the, this function right here, the payable public, this is what happens when money comes in. It increments a count, and it emits, um, makes a log entry, which I added just so we can see it. And then it does another withdraw, up to 10. And instead of to avoid just running forever, it limits it to 10 with a count. So it now calls withdraw 10 more times. Uh, so this function will re-enter many times and execute many times. That's the re-entrancy attack. So we compiled it, and then we deploy it. Um, yep, OK. Must deploy the rewards contract first, and then get the address, and then deploy the attack contract, which needs that address. OK. All right. So now we have to fund the rewards contract. It's, the original plan is, is going to be just giving away some funds to people. So we're going to go to um, 20 Ether. Fund it with 20 Ether from account number one. And that will be deposit. The transaction succeeds, and this balance falls to 80. All right. And now I can do get balance, and the balance is now 20 Ether in the recontract. OK. Now I allow two gifts. So I put in two and allow. So it's permitting up to two gifts to come out. And I can click the number of gifts and see that it is two. All right. Now I can withdraw a gift. If I withdraw one, and then get balance, 
is now 19 and gifts is now 1. So it's working. It'll only let me, uh, the number is falling. Okay. And now if I would draw a second gift, the balance is now 18 and the number of gifts is now 0. And if I try to withdraw any more, um, the balance remains at 18 and the gifts remains at 0. I don't actually get any more. All right. So now I'm going to allow two more. And now I'm going to steal 10. So I go down to attacker and just attack. And now if I check the balance that was 18, it's now fallen to 8. So I stole 10 ether, even though only one or two should have been permitted. So that is the attack in all of its glory. And uh, there, these things have been getting logged on the blockchain, and you can see the logs down here. So go down to the next to last transaction, which is uh, here. And I think it's this. Yeah. And there are logs in here. Yeah, this one has just almost nothing in the log, but the one before that has got some log entries that were recorded during the theft. I think. Yep. Anyway, there are some logs to find there, and there's a flag to find in the logs. Well, I think this might be it. Yeah, here's the logs. So you see, i roll this up. I can get this barrier. To, there we are. Come on. There we are. So you see here it is doing a transaction and another and another and another. And here's the count counting up to four, five, six. This is the 10 transactions that were uh, done by the reentrancy attack when there was only supposed to be one. All right. So we can fix it. So let's remove the deployed contracts and to fix it uh, we can modify it as shown below. Let me roll this back down. All right, so I changed the function withdraw public right here and I need to make it look like this example here. So it's U mount ether. So now instead of if gifts greater than zero do this, you set this is the fix gifts equal minus so gifts minus equals one first you subtract one from gifts outside the loop and then if gifts is greater less than a thousand because you count on the fact which is another insane thing about this language if you go down to zero and subtract one it rolls over to plus infinity to the 256 minus one so when you subtract the last gift and it rolls under zero, it will turn into a huge positive number and this condition will no longer be true. And uh, I can use space to make that prettier. And then that should do it. Just those two lines should do it. So now if I repeat the whole process, I compile this modified contract and then I deploy it. And I think I'll just go to a clean blockchain again. All right, now I deploy it. And it had an error, invalid. Oh, that's right, because I wrote the attacker. First, you have to attack, deploy the rewards contract, and then get the address, and then deploy the attacker contract with that address. Okay, and so now... Uh, if I repeat the process, which is I have to fund the thing. So that's going to be deposit. So let's deposit uh, 20 Ether for my account number. I'll use account number one. So I deposit. And now I'm going to get balance, which is 20. Now I'm going to allow two gifts. So now two gifts are allowed, and now I'm going to try to take away 10 here with my attack. 
and it succeeds but my balance was 20 and now it is 18. I managed to steal only two not 10. So that limited the damage. That's one solution. All right. I think there's actually another solution. I don't remember to add that here. Yeah, there's an alternate fix that I thought was simply true. Just reversing the order of lines 11 and 12 will work too. Where you, here's where you call them and you subtract a gift up here so that when they do re-entrance and come back in, it will subtract a gift again and it will still fall. So that would do it essentially the same way. In this one, I think you'll still be able to get two gifts, but you won't be able to get 10 gifts in this test case. All right. That's...